Hi, I'm Rachel. Before I dive into my story, please make sure to like and subscribe for more tales from my life. Now, let me take you back to the beginning of my marriage with David. A time that was supposed to be filled with joy, but was shadowed by unexpected challenges. It was the shimmer of new vows that warmed our first days as a married couple. David and I had just moved into a quaint neighborhood, where every street corner seemed to promise lifelong friendships and community barbecues. Life was blissful, with our small, cozy dinners and the gentle way David would kiss me goodnight. We were the picture of newlywed happiness, eager to build our lives together. However, as weeks turned into months, I started sensing a shift in the air. It was subtle at first, the friendly nods turning into hurried glances, the warm welcomes cooling into brief hellos. I couldn't put my finger on it, but something was off. One particularly crisp morning, I decided to confront the issue head on. I approached our neighbor, Mrs. Thompson, who was always keen to chat over the fence. Good morning, Mrs. Thompson. It's a lovely day, isn't it? She offered a smile, though it didn't reach her eyes. Oh yes, Rachel. Very lovely. I hesitated, then plunged forward. I've noticed things seem a bit different around here. Have I done something wrong? Mrs. Thompson looked around before leaning closer. Well, Rachel, it's not my place to say, but some folks have been talking. They say you've been a bit careless with money and that you're not treating David right. My heart sank. Who's been saying these things? She sighed. It's all coming from Susan, David's mom. I didn't want to believe it, but she's been quite convincing. The revelation hit like a punch to the gut. Susan, my mother-in-law, had been at our wedding, smiling and clapping. But behind that facade, she was planting seeds of doubt about me in our community. Later that evening, David came home to find me sitting quietly in the living room. What's wrong, Rachel? You look upset. I took a deep breath. We need to talk about your mom. She's been telling people that I'm irresponsible with money and that I'm a neglectful wife. David's expression darkened. What? That's ridiculous. Why would she do that? I don't know, but it's affecting how people treat me here. I feel so isolated, David. He took my hands in his. I'm so sorry, Rachel. I had no idea. Let's sort this out. I'll talk to her tomorrow. We'll have a family meeting if we need to. The conversation reassured me, yet the damage was already seeping deeper into our lives, casting long shadows over our bright beginning. Little did I know, this was just the start of a battle to clear my name and protect our marriage. The trust and unity David and I shared were about to be tested by the very person who was supposed to support us the most. David, she's your mother. I don't understand why she would do this to me. We're going to find out, Rachel, I promise. The tension was palpable as we gathered in the community hall, neighbors and family members filling the room. David stood at the front, his posture rigid with determination. Thank you all for coming. We're here to address some serious accusations made against my wife, Rachel. Susan sat stiffly, her eyes darting around the room as David continued. Susan, You've been telling people that Rachel is irresponsible and neglectful. Can you explain why? I... I just want what's best for you, David. I might have said things, but... But nothing, Mom. You lied about Rachel. Why? The room was silent, the air thick with anticipation as Susan struggled to respond. I was just... Concerned. Maybe I got carried away. Carried away? You deliberately hurt Rachel. People here trusted your word. David pressed on, his voice stern. One by one, neighbors stood up to speak. I heard those rumors, Susan. I didn't want to believe them, said Mrs. Jenkins, shaking her head. And I heard them, too. It changed how I saw Rachel, and I regret that now, added Mr. Thompson. As more people confirmed hearing the rumors from Susan, the reality of her actions began to sink in. The murmurs in the room grew louder, a mix of shock and disapproval directed at Susan. Susan's face turned pale, her composure cracking. I... I apologize if I caused any trouble. If... Susan, you need to own what you did. This wasn't a small mistake. You spread lies about my wife. David's voice boomed across the hall. I'm sorry, truly. I thought I was protecting you. Protecting me by isolating Rachel? That's not protection, that's manipulation. The room nodded in agreement, the community's earlier suspicions turning into support for us. Susan... Your actions have consequences. We need trust to heal and move forward. You need to make this right, David concluded, 
his gaze unwavering as he looked at his mother. Susan nodded meekly, her voice barely a whisper. I'll do better. I promise. As the meeting ended, neighbors approached us, their expressions softened, offering apologies and support. The scales had tipped, the truth was out, and the path to healing was just beginning. David squeezed my hand, a silent vow that together, we would rebuild what had been damaged. The weeks following the confrontation were a mix of cautious optimism and lingering tension. Susan's apology, though forced, had given me a sliver of hope that things might improve. But that hope was short-lived. At the annual community picnic, I found myself standing near the refreshment table, exchanging pleasantries with Mrs. Thompson. It's such a lovely day, isn't it? I tried to keep my tone light, but the underlying anxiety was hard to mask. Yes, it is, Rachel. How have you been holding up? Mrs. Thompson's voice was warm, yet tinged with concern. Before I could respond, I overheard Susan's voice behind me, loud enough for everyone nearby to hear. Well, if you ask me, some people just can't handle their responsibilities. It's a shame, really. They just leech off others. My heart sank. I knew she was talking about me. The conversations around us faltered, the jovial atmosphere dampening. David noticed the shift and approached, his expression hardening as he saw my face. What did she say this time? He asked quietly, his hand resting protectively on my shoulder. She's at it again, David. I can't believe it. After everything? He turned toward Susan, his voice loud and clear. Mom, we need to talk, now. People started to murmur, eyes darting between us and Susan. Really, David? You're going to make a scene here? Susan tried to dismiss him, but her voice wavered. Yes, I am. Because you can't seem to stop spreading lies about Rachel. This ends now. The crowd around us grew silent, watching the confrontation unfold. David, you're overreacting. I'm just speaking the truth. Susan snapped back, her face flushed with anger. The truth? You call this the truth? You're trying to ruin Rachel's reputation for no reason. This is your last warning. Last warning? Who do you think you are? Threatening your own mother. I'm someone who cares about his wife, and I won't let you destroy our lives with your lies. The tension was thick enough to cut with a knife. I felt a mix of emotions, anger, hurt, and an overwhelming sense of isolation. The community I once hoped to be a part of was now a battleground, and I was at the center of it. Later that night, back home, I broke down. David, I can't keep doing this. It's too much. She's turning everyone against me. I know, Rachel. I see what it's doing to you, and it breaks my heart. We need to take a stand. If she won't stop, we'll have to distance ourselves from her. But she's your mother. How can we just cut her out of our lives? Because she's toxic, and our marriage, your well-being, comes first. I'll talk to her again. But if she doesn't change, we're done. I nodded, wiping my tears. Thank you, David. I don't know what I'd do without you. We're in this together, Rachel. Always. The next day, David confronted Susan one last time, making it clear that her behavior had to stop or we would cut ties completely. The community began to see her for who she really was, and the support we received from friends and neighbors strengthened our resolve. It was a painful decision, but as we started to distance ourselves from Susan, we began to rebuild. Our relationship grew stronger, fortified by the trials we had endured. And while the wounds were still fresh, we knew we were heading in the right direction, determined to create a positive and loving environment, free from toxicity. The community center was buzzing with activity, the annual charity auction in full swing. David and I stood together, trying to enjoy the evening despite the lingering tension from Susan's latest outburst. But David had a determined look in his eyes. He had decided enough was enough. As the auctioneer wrapped up another item, David cleared his throat and stepped forward. Excuse me, everyone. I have something important to say. The room quieted, all eyes turning towards us. Susan looked visibly annoyed, probably anticipating another confrontation. Many of you know there have been rumors about my wife, Rachel. I want to set the record straight tonight. Murmurs spread through the crowd as David continued. These rumors have been harmful and baseless, spread by none other than my own mother, Susan. Gasps filled the room, followed by a stunned silence. Susan tried to stand up, but David raised his hand, stopping her. No, Mom, you need to listen. 
You've been lying about Rachel for months, trying to turn this community against her. And it stops now. A neighbor, Mr. Jenkins, stepped forward. I've heard the rumors, David. It's hard to believe they came from your mother. They did, Mr. Jenkins. And she's been doing it deliberately to harm Rachel and our marriage. More neighbors nodded in agreement. Mrs. Thompson added, We've all heard the things Susan has said. It's not right. David took a deep breath. I love my mother, but her actions are unacceptable. Rachel is a kind, responsible, and loving wife. She doesn't deserve this. The support was overwhelming. Neighbors who had been swayed by Susan's lies started to see the truth. Susan, you owe Rachel an apology, Mrs. Jenkins demanded, her voice firm. Susan looked around, realizing she had no allies left. I... I'm sorry, Rachel. I didn't mean for things to go this far. It's too late for apologies, David said. You've caused enough damage. From now on, we will be distancing ourselves from you. The room buzzed with agreement, people murmuring their support for us. Susan's face turned red with embarrassment and anger, but she knew she was beaten. As the evening progressed, David and I were approached by numerous neighbors offering their apologies and support. The tide had turned and Susan was left isolated, facing the consequences of her actions. I'm so proud of you, David, I whispered, hugging him tightly. I'll always stand by you, Rachel, no matter what. In the days that followed, Susan faced significant social backlash. Her standing in the community plummeted, and she became a pariah. Meanwhile, David and I focused on rebuilding our lives, strengthened by the support of our friends and neighbors, and free from the toxic influence of his mother. The weeks after the public confrontation were both liberating and challenging. David and I made the difficult decision to cut ties with Susan, a necessary step to protect our peace and rebuild our lives. How are you feeling, Rachel? David asked one morning as we shared breakfast on our porch, the sunlight filtering through the trees. I feel... relieved. It's been hard, but we're finally moving forward, I replied, taking a sip of my coffee. We focused on cultivating the relationships that mattered. Mrs. Thompson invited us over for dinner, and it felt like the first real acceptance we had experienced in a long time. It's so nice to see you both. We've missed having you around, Mrs. Thompson said warmly. Thank you for having us. It means a lot, I responded, genuinely touched by her kindness. As we settled into a new routine, we became more involved in the community. We volunteered at the local shelter, attended neighborhood meetings, and organized events. The change was palpable. People began to see us not through Susan's distorted lens, but for who we really were. One Saturday, as we helped set up for a community fair, Mr. Jenkins approached us. I have to say, you both have done wonders for this community. It's great to see you so involved. Thanks, Mr. Jenkins. It's important to us to give back and be a part of something positive, David replied, smiling. Our efforts were not unnoticed. The community began to rally around us, their support unwavering. They saw the genuine love and commitment we had for each other, and for the community. One evening, we hosted a small gathering at our home. Friends who had stood by us filled the rooms with laughter and warmth. Here's to new beginnings, Mrs. Thompson toasted, raising her glass. To new beginnings, we echoed, clinking glasses and smiling at each other. As the evening wound down, David and I stood on the porch watching the stars. I never thought we'd get through this, but here we are, I said, leaning into him. We're stronger because of it. And look at us now, surrounded by people who truly care about us, David said, his arm around my shoulder. The peace we had longed for was finally ours. The malicious rumors and the toxic influence of Susan were behind us. We had emerged from the ordeal stronger, our relationship fortified by the trials we had faced together. In the coming months, we continued to build on this newfound strength. We planned small trips, explored new hobbies, and spent quality time with friends. Our home became a haven of joy and love, a stark contrast to the tension that had once plagued it. One day, as we walked through the park, hand in hand, David turned to me with a thoughtful look. You know, Rachel, I think this is just the beginning for us. We've been through so much, and yet here we are, happier than ever. I agree, David. We've got a lot to look forward to, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. We stopped by a bench, watching children play, and families enjoy the sunny day. The sense of community, now a source of comfort rather than distress, enveloped us. 
As we sat there, I felt a deep sense of vindication and love. The battle we had fought had not only cleared my name, but had also solidified the bond between David and me. We were no longer under the shadow of Susan's toxicity. Instead, we basked in the warmth of genuine relationships and mutual respect. Our journey had been fraught with challenges, but it had led us to a place of peace and happiness. As we looked ahead, we knew that whatever came our way, we would face it together, stronger and more united than ever before. That's the end of the story. Now, I have a question for you all. What would you do if a close family member spread malicious rumors about you? Would you confront them publicly or handle it privately? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more compelling stories and discussions. Thanks for watching.